Yeah. So I'm just going to tell a quick story of how uh, I've been teaching data science in Africa. I'm not presenting this in uh, the capacity of uh, a lab coordinator somewhere, but my capacity of the uh, Lisa 2020 ambassador. Uh, I'm going to give you a story, a little story about my activities and how probably it all began. And uh, so I'm going to be talking on teaching data science in Africa via virtual team-based learning. I'm going to tell you what motivated me to choose this topic and to go into this as we go on. And so I'm going to be following this outline. I'm going to tell you a bit about the journey and uh, a bit about data science and my motivations, then team of project-based learning, and why should we use it for uh, data science? And uh, why do we go virtual and how? Then I'm going to tell you about a, an academy that we set up to do this, and then some topics that we have taught, and then the experiments that we perform, challenges and solutions. I'm sure you're going to gain one or two things from this talk. So I'm going to start with the journey. Because the journey started in 2013, when, uh, by the grace of God, I was selected as a first LISA fellow in uh, Africa or in developing countries. I think out of about 108 uh, applicants, there are about, uh, I visited uh, our mentor, the global director at Virginia Tech, and I was there for one year. And there I became a member of the family of uh, Lisa. This was at Virginia Tech before he moved to uh, Colorado, University of Colorado Buddha. And there I participated in about 25 projects, collaboration projects. It was really a school, but I was given a certificate after at the end of the whole thing. It was a great school for me. So I served as lead statistical collaborator. I taught short courses. And uh, it was really a time to be mentored. You can see Professor Vance will come to us, ask how we are, we are doing. This uh, is me and another collaborator. I think I was the lead collaborator in this project uh, during, at this, uh, on this particular day. And then um, he came to us to ask how it all went. So where he's sitting is where the client will sit. So these two of us were on duty here on that day. So it was really a time of uh, mentorship. And uh, that was before the, uh, and I was at the advent of Lisa 2020. You can see the family. Uh, I think this here, look, look at me there. Here is Toya Prout. Look at the, okay, I have the pointer. Look at the, this, this guy went on to start something also in his own country, in Tanzania. And so it was a big family, learning a lot. And uh, that was where the story began. And then one day I was told to go and teach out. I taught our members of the university who attend. So you can see me, I started the, the basics, basics of R. So I taught it. And then Ian Crandell, who also came to Nigeria later, you see him, he taught the second one. So the two of us, I'm going to tell you during the course of my story, we later came to Africa to teach the same thing. And so it was really a good time. Then there's another thing called video coaching. 
video coaching. Look at me in this video, not showing very well. The way it works is that as we did the role play this morning, uh, the video, the camera will be on standby. Be looking at you, what you are telling the client, how you are responding to the client. Everything you are doing, the camera is capturing it. Then back in the lab to senior this, the, as this was the assistant director of Lisa, assistant to Professor Vance, and some other people. You can see Tonya Prout here, the secretary of Lisa, and another person. They will now be looking, they will now be um, assessing how you perform. What you told the client, should you have said that? Was that the right answer? Case of next time, what should it be? I'm, I'm wondering whether we are still doing it in labs today. So this is what we should be practicing. Yeah, so video coaching is very important. So you can see me taking notes. You can see me taking notes. You know, you note where you did well, where you uh, uh, didn't do well and all that. And so it makes you better. Now, I came back and then we had a grand ceremony at uh, uh, OAU. This is uh, Professor Mark Inde here and some other recognized uh, colleagues. We started a lab and then you see the uh, people, colleagues and students there, then started training uh, students. Here is a session of uh, uh, happy, uh, uh, trained students have been trained and they are there with their certificate. You can see the joy on their faces. Some of them had never heard of what we taught them at that time. And then a lot of other uh, uh, activities in uh, uh, Angkor University, Lagos. I don't want to bore you with photos. This span through years, about 12 years, my career, teaching all over, training. And then uh, from OAU, we went to UI, started the lab. This is still OAU. This is the dean. This was the then dean, Professor Ogun Fawakon. This is in Kranda. He had come to Nigeria then. Look at this was the first time that uh, Professor Vance visited Nigeria. And this is Professor Mark Inde that is here with us today. Uh, as far back as uh, then. Now, this is OAU. I mean, sorry, this is UI. This, is, this was the DVC, I think. DVC, this is Professor Lupu Soye. This is uh, my advisor. Then this is uh, Ian Crandell. And I don't know this man. I can't remember him. So, and you see the journey. And this is uh, Professor Vance. Can you recognize what he was eating here? <laughs> so, you can imagine someone coming all the way. This is a great sacrifice. I think we should give him a hand here. This is a great sacrifice, coming all the way to try our food, although maybe he couldn't eat it, just because of his passion for developing uh, data science capacity in Africa. Look at how, what, what he has, look at the journey, look at what he has been through, and then look at when I went to pick uh, Ian Krande, this is the ambassador to Nigeria, he was ambassador to Nigeria. Uh, he handed over to me, so I became ambassador to Africa. So he came to help us uh, at OAU and at UI. And uh, this is when we went to pick him at the airport. And uh, I remember also, I cannot bore you with photos, a lot of activity. This is ABU, Kaduna State. Now I cannot try that, but it's okay, it's okay. <laughs> there are some parts that are not safe, but Nigeria is very, very is safe. Nigeria is fantastic. Now, I went as far back as, as this is Iya Abubakar Hall at ABU. 
I went, I took a flight to Zaria, then from Zaria to, to the school, we, took, we went by road. And you can see the happy participants, you know, maybe I will have done this virtually, but I had to go all the way to that place. Now, this is Ogite. This one, I went on boat. I did not tell my wife, very local boat. I almost fell into the, I was looking for that picture I would have shown it, but I sacrificed, I went on boat to one part of Ogun State, to this uh, school, Ogun State Institute of Technology. And then when I got there, I was received like a king and we had a very successful workshop and you can see the joy on their faces, okay? So back to uh, data science. You see, this is the world of data. We have data everywhere. Africa needs data, data scientists, because we have lots and lots of data being generated and we're housed everywhere. We have research data, e-commerce, finance, financial transactions, bank credit transactions, online trading, and purchasing, social network data, and what have you. So, but there are no enough data scientists to handle all this type of data being generated, especially in Africa. And as we know, data science is a multidisciplinary field. It's a multidisciplinary field. You see, talk of any area, you need a data scientist. Data scientists will function in any of these area is a multidisciplinary field of study with the goal to address the challenges in big and small data, also small data anyway. Now I saw this online by this guy, Shashi Up Upper Day. I think he's an India, he's the CEO of this uh, company, Lattice. He said, and I quote, say data scientists are unicorns. They are professionals with diverse skill sets that is not commonly found in a single individual. They are great, great people. So we now see that the challenge of building data science capacity is not as easy as we may think. Now, a data scientist will need to have almost if not all these skills. He needs to be an applied mathematician, an applied statistician or data analyst. A pro, he needs to have programming skills like R, Python, Julia, SQL, data mining or mongering or wrangling skills, database storage and management skills, machine learning, machine learning and discovery, data visualization, non-technical skills, presentation skills, collaboration skills, and what have you. Now, I've said it before, and I want to say it again, that statisticians and data scientists are needed everywhere. These days, you see even medical doctors coming to the field of data science. You see people, even in English, coming to the field of data science. There's something called digital uh, humanities. Now, in 2018, it was projected that they will need this number of predictive analysts. I don't know if that was met. And now you see new data science institutes everywhere. NU, uh, 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 NYU, Columbia University, Washington, and uh, I want to add Lisa to that uh, number. Lisa is also in that number now. Now, new degree programs, courses, boot camps, everywhere now, you know, coming up, being developed. Several proposals, you and I know, maybe in your university, have you not written a proposal on data science? Did you write or did you not? Some of us have written, isn't it? We wrote proposals on data science to start BSc data science, MSc data science, and what have you. I project that in the next five years, 
a lot of universities will begin to spring, I mean, a lot of departments of data science will begin to spring up. And uh, if you have younger ones that need to study something lucrative, maybe they should go into data science. So many data science groups and our own very, our dear Lisa 2020, we are also training data scientists, aren't we? Yes, give a clap offering to data, uh, Lisa 2020. So several online courses on data science, and then that was what moved. So when I left the shores of Africa, a lot of people were still called, oh, you going, we booked you for this, uh, we book now thought, what can we do? Then incidentally, you know, I was appointed as the Lisa ambassador. I said, wow, I can continue doing this. And when I got to Brazil for the first six months, the old school everywhere was closed off because of COVID. I was inside, working from home. <laughs> so what should I do? We have to go online. So that was why we started this Ada Global Academy, which is affiliated with Lisa uh, uh, at the University of Colorado. And uh, here's the logo. Is an online platform where we develop uh, uh, the young ones uh, on data science. Now, we have great board members and instructors. Dr. Kinlove has been great. We have uh, Professor Jim Cochran, uh, dear Professor Banks, uh, Professor Ahmad Zahor from Pakistan, and uh, a friend from UK, Ivan Yeni, and Professor David Banks, Professor Paulo Rodriguez, and Ed Olayemi. This Edward was a student in OAU. He was the one that Professor Vance showed with me in his talk yesterday, where we were attending to a client. Now he has graduated, he's now the head of data insights and analytics at Ford, uh, First Bank of Nigeria is a big boy now, <laughs> big man. And all he started with Lisa and he has been of help to us. He has been training with us. Now, here's my motivation. I say, how do we go wide? So I saw this article going virtual and going wide, comparing team-based learning in class versus online and across disciplines. So I saw this and then another one, of course, uh, the one by Professor Vance, using team-based learning to teach data science. So I said, wow, we can do something. We can, you see, many, I told you of all these online courses, they just teach them and leave them and they go. There's no uh, avenue to interact, to team up, to come up with projects and to do something together that will last. And then, so we said, we can do something to make impacts. And I saw this paper talk so much about team-based learning. Uh, by the way, when I visited him, I sat in his class where he was teaching uh, data science with team-based learning. I think I scored uh, 92%. So I really like it, and uh, it's really uh, a great uh, method that we can use. So we tried to adopt it, and then we started through Ada Global Academy, we started teaching data science online. So what we do is that we'll make the students appreciate the course better, we'll practice many examples with them, prepare training manuals, try to be dynamic, don't, uh, be, you don't try to understand your audience. Some may catch it fast. Some may not catch it as fast. Then talk to them slowly, be practical. Let them practice and teach them how to get help. This one will also apply anytime when you are teaching in your labs. You should adopt all these. Give them assignments allow them to try new code. These are things I've adopted over the years, about 10, more than 10 years that I've been teaching data science. Make it interactive, correct them where wrong, divide them into groups. So that is where 
the idea of uh, team-based learning comes to play. So team-based learning is defined as a small group of a uh, small group instructional uh, strategy that provides students with opportunities to apply conceptual knowledge through a sequence of activities that includes individual work, teamwork, and of course, they will give immediate feedbacks. You give them immediate feedbacks, then you correct them again, then you give them another assignment. Correct. You can see this picture. You can see this is a typical class uh, that's similar to Professor Vance's class, although not as large, I think, I suppose. But this is how it groups its students. Uh, they will group themselves and then they will practice something together and then they will, you will give them uh, feedbacks. Now, a, a group or team activity will enhance students' ability to work collaboratively and uh, respectfully. They will learn to respect one another and to consider different viewpoints. And then it allows perspectives to be considered, various perspectives to be considered. Then they collectively solve problems to determine, uh, to, to determine a shared solution. And then not only that, to do all this in an online environment, we require that students who have the ability to engage and collaborate virtually. So we did an experiment. We set up an interview. We had a flyer. We set up an, uh, I mean, sorry, not interview, a, 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 a workshop. We had a flyer, like a scholarship. Then we said we wanted 30 scholars of African origin. Then we, we selected them, we gave them uh, uh, Zoom links via Zoom. And then we taught them some data science topics, majorly machine learning. Of course, we started with uh, some R. Then we shared recorded lectures with them. So also practice, we gave them assignments and uh, uh, group projects. And then here are the projects they came up with. Of course, these are the topics that we taught. Of course, these are some important topics that you can teach while using R to teach data science. You see, uh, subsetting data, importing data, data modeling, machine learning. This is what we taught majorly, but we had to teach all this before. Time series, clustering, uh, R functions, loops, inbuilt packages, data visualization, uh, uh, developing simple and effective programming skills. Now here are some results. Look at what they came up with. Look at, we have 10 projects now. Let's assume we have three, three on each project. Now look at these projects. These projects, may I tell you, they have written them up in a paper format about to be sent for publication great publication. And what we do is to attach each of these projects to one of those mentors that we, we, we was uh, listed to look at the project after they must have finished. And then we'll now put them up properly to be sent out for uh, publication in high ranking journals. So the students are happy that they have opportunity to I have something that in future, when they Google their names, they will see it there. This is what they did after attending a particular workshop. And then they brainstorm. We gave them Zoom links. They can log into the Zoom link and decide on this. So they've been on it for about two months now, but they could come out. I can show you completed papers of this. Uh, 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 this. And uh, some of them are uh, like 20 or 25 pages. Uh -huh. And then they put everything up, and you can see these topics. Now, uh, challenges and solutions, funding. We need funding to pay for instructor time. We need funding. The solution, potential solution to that is to charge the participants a token and personnel. We need volunteers. And then, of course, we can use the previous trainees. I told you of Edward, and then logistics. Logistics, uh, sometimes internet will not work. 
then we need to purchase uh, better uh, internet uh, uh, facilities. Then timing. Timing. Sometimes the time chosen is not good for the people at the other end. You need to be more flexible about the time. And then uh, sometimes we have low participation and think we need to advertise more. Now, here are some of the testimonies on um, some feedbacks. Someone said, I like ADA Academy because it provides training on different statistical packages, which is key to statisticians and help in building our career. Someone also said it is really informative learning data science at ADA Global Academy. Someone also said the quality of the expertise of the tutors is second to none. Someone said the ADA Global Academy is an excellent learning platform for young scholars to diversify their quantitative skills in modern statistical techniques while gaining an added opportunity to produce a publishable research uh, paper. Another one said ADA Global Academy is one of the best places to be either as a data scientist or prospective data scientist. And so many testimonies, so many testimonies. Let me see, let me read one or two more. The trainers were down to earth. They have a full knowledge of the courses taught and the hands-on sessions were really impactful. And one said, being able to publish a paper at the end of the course was another milestone in my career. I really appreciate ADA Global Academy for this selfless service to humanity. And this was done free. This particular one was done free of charge, completely free of charge. And he uh, said the tutors came in for each class session, that came in for each class session uh, uh, was the high point for me. Learning from great minds is a privilege I will never take for granted. So the take home here is that we do not allow barriers to hinder us. Online platform has come to stay. We can adopt this online platform and the labs can do this can practice this, and then we can introduce team-based learning in teaching data science. I encourage everyone to pick that uh, Professor Vance uh, article uh, that won the best paper award in uh, the Journal of Statistics Education, and to go through that paper and uh, you do what is inside, practice what is daring. Then, there should be no more barriers in our labs. I saw that UI uh, was doing the same thing. I hope it should continue. Let it continue lab to lab. We can adopt virtual platform. And when you teach, don't just teach and leave them. Give them a project, put them into teams. Let them do something together that will last long. So I want to... Thank you for listening, and I want to say that this is just a new chapter of our success story, and uh, we are still going far as individual labs and as this 2020 globally. Thank you very much. Thank you. Um, we have time for questions and comments from the audience. Uh, Olawali, I saw you propose to use uh, the TBL, the team-based learning to teach data science. Have you tried to uh, make like uh, a TBL joined with data science competitions to make the students uh, uh, compete between, because in TBL, the students in the same group, they help each other. 
Have you tried to see what happens if you put some groups to compete to each other to see if they have different answers or if they feel more engaged to present a better analysis or something like that? One one. Yeah, thank you for your nice presentation. Um, my question is about the way that you use team-based learning. For us as teachers, we use the group studies. And uh, in grouping them or assigning them into groups, some teachers look at the qualities that they possess. They look at the level of intelligence and group them by that. Not grouping all the intelligent people at one side and the weak people at one side, you miss them. So I don't know whether in your team this then that's how you go by it, or you have a special way of bringing them together. Do you go by grouping them from schools, from various areas, or you look at the level of intelligence before putting them together? Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you, everyone. Thank you. Give a round of applause. Okay, let's welcome our next speaker, Dr. Sherifat Bolorunzo. Kind of, did I get close? <laughs> um, well, okay. From the University of Ibadan in Nigeria. Please welcome our next. Hello, everyone. Thank you very much. Uh, like you know, I'm, I'm from UI Lisa. Uh, that's the second uh, lab in Nigeria, but now the most active lab in the global network. So I have to say that. So uh, our own sustainability uh, experiment is titled Community-Based Statistical Support Program. And somebody was asking me that we are very plenty. If I want to put all the names of the people in the lab, in fact, the whole slide will not contain us because the lab carries all every every member of the of this uh, both the student and the and the staff. So, so I will be guided uh, guided by this outline. Is this one? Okay. So, short description of UI Lisa, background to UI Lisa uh, experiment, the experiment results, strengths and weakness of the experiment, and come and recommendation. So, like I said, what is UI Lisa? For those that don't know about UI Lisa, you've been hearing our name, our our own identity from the. You can get to know about UI Lisa using our website. For those that have been coming to visit the website, for those that doesn't know the website, this is our website, and you can get to know us better by if you want to have anything to do with us, maybe you want to collaborate, you need training, you need anything, just use that email, management at disaui.com. Then we have a desk officer that will attend to your mail then you use our website. So that is our identity. So our address, same thing. Then like I said, that UIDSA is the second start lab in Nigeria. And we started from 2014. So the, 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 the lab came into existence properly 
with the MOU between Virginia Tech and UI, UI Lisa on, I think it should be April 2015. So let's say we are inaugurated in 2015. Then what are can actually benefit but now we now we are thinking we've been serving the university environment let us take you to like what prof said in the morning that some people are not ready to come to the lab why can't we move from the lab why can't we move and go go and meet them so that is when they yeah, will go back to our sustainability experiment then who are our team in our website, you can actually get all the team members. We have all of them. We are, we are, we, we can, I can't exhaust name. So I won't be mentioning, I won't bore you with our team. But when you log into the website, you get to know UIDSAT. So the background to UIDSAT sustainability projects. Okay, I said it is community based statistical support program. Like I told you that we've been having services with academia the students, the uh, teaching staff, the non-teaching staff, they've been coming to the lab. So we now felt, what can we do to those that have not really benefited from our service? And we thought going, doing an outreach, you know, when you want to preach, you want to preach a particular religion, new religion to people, you need to go out, you evangelize. So that is why we felt, okay, why can't we do a kind of outreach program? When we, we now target business, small business, uh, medium uh, businesses. So, and we felt, you know, UI is, a, is, a, is at the center of Ibadan, in the middle of uh, the state. So we felt there is a particular environment, a community that is close to us. It is called Agogo. So we felt this UI community, it comprises of business owners. Let us take statistics to them. Let's see what what they need. Let's uh, uh, evangelize data science and statistics to this host community. That was what brought about this uh, experiment. So what we felt and what we did was that we introduced simple statistical tools to these business owners by, okay, you know, in the lab, our major strength in the lab for now is we train interns. We have interns, students came for, IT industrial training. We have some three month training uh, interns. We have six month interns. Then we have uh, now we have graduate interns. Those that finish their uh, undergraduates that they've served, they still come to the lab. They are graduates. Some are waiting to start uh, their MSc. So they felt before they get admission into the graduate program, why can't we go to UIDS and get a kind of training between that time? before they will become a graduate student. So we do have, now we have graduate students at the lab. So we have three types of interns. We have three month interns. We have six month interns. We have graduate interns. In fact, presently I have two, two or three interns that, you know, in Nigeria, if you finish your OND, we call something ordinary diploma, uh, uh, ordinary national diploma. And you have to do a year internship before you can start your uh, HND. So we I have some three interns that they are basically for one year internship. So we now train all these in, uh, interns. We train is like a kind of training, training the trainers. We have some collaborators at the lab that train them. So most of my collaborators are here. So we train these interns. They are being put on so many trainings. Which we 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 uh, we've, uh, we've introduced them to so many statistical tools. So we now, we, we now take, we train these uh, interns, they were the ones that we use for this experiment. So what we do was to take the lab. We are now taking UI design because we, we, are, we are known within the university community. Everybody knows UI design. Now, if you enter UI from the gate, you just have, you are going to UI design, they will tell you, 
Oh, oh it's our yeah, department yeah, of statistics. Yeah. In 103, you're going to, if we can get uh, one of one of our flyers that are over again, because we've been doing mobile statistical, those are the activities that we've been doing. So we felt what are the thing, uh, new things that we can do. So we, not, we are not taking this, our lab, to doorstep of business actors, rather than waiting for them to come, because somebody that is selling at a good, might not know where your design is. So we now try to go and uh, meet them. So these are some of our intents. So what we do, which like I said, the intents were trained and they were the one that we used to train the business actors. So what they do is to collect information on their daily activities. They process their, their, the business uh, owner's data based on their income, their inventories and some other uh, activities of the business owner. So we now help them to produce evidence to make decisions to improve their operating uh, performance. So other things that we do, like, okay, from the experiment, let me explain the experiment, experiment that we do. We first list, we group the students into, into groups. So the first stage, the experiment is in three stages. So the first stage was to do a kind of listening. So we get the EA of Agowo environment by listing some small business um, uh, owners within that community. So we, we 52 business uh, enterprises were covered for the first stage. So out of these 52, I think we have medical laboratories, we have beauty parlors, we have barbie salons, we have schools, supermarkets, chemists, and so on. So the second stage was to write a letter to get their consent. Okay, we wanted to do a kind, we wanted to do something for our lab and we need your consent. Do you want to be part of the, of the experiment? So we write a consent letter and that was dispatched through our intents. So we, we, we write them and out of the 52, it's, it's uh, business own, owners are ready for the experiment because you know we have a timeline. The, the experiment says January to March. So we are looking for those that are ready during that time so that we can actually uh, use those that are ready for the experiment. So from the eight that were selected that were ready to participate, that are very close to the campus, I have four private schools. I have uh, one fabric store, one fashion uh, training center, one computer or phone accessory store, and one phone repair. He's an engineer, he, a phone repair engineer. So this is, these are the frequencies and uh, percentage. So like I said, you know, I said we have three stages for the, uh, for the experiment. So the second stage was, um, a kind of a pre preliminary or let me say uh, a, a training, a familiarization stage where the collaborators are the lab. Each of those uh, groups have each supervisor. So each supervisor and the groups, we went to the business owners together to go and meet them because we don't want the interns to go alone. So we went together to go to, to the community. So when we, when, we, when we reach there, we try to introduce the interns, that these are the interns that are coming to train you, what you need. We want to know your business activities, the data you generated, how we can use statistics to build your business capacity. So we did that for them. So I think these students, okay, so the, the, we have a, a kind of evaluation. We, we have pre-assessment evaluation to know whether what we actually want to do to know the level of uh, their statistic uh, literacy before and after the experiment. So before the training, there are some of them said they, do, they have no prior knowledge or skills in any software for data analysis. And some says they are, some are saying that they, are, they they've heard about Excel before, but they don't know how to go about it, they don't know how to use it. They thought Excel is just for adding, maybe just add, uh, your income, that, that is what, what they know that Excel can do. They don't know they can actually use to build their data, uh, uh, to build their data. So 
this is one of our intent. So, like I said, that we 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 make sure that in Elisa, our intents, if you train some set of intents. So what we do is like, okay, you you have been you uh, we we give them opportunity to train others. So we make sure that all this training were done by the interns. And this is one of the interns in, the, in that yellow jacket. So he was able to, like this man is a, is a proprietor of a school. He said he has been using Excel just for adding the income only. He doesn't know that he can use it to take inventories. He can use it to summarize, uh, summarize the, uh, the event of the school. So he was able to, they take him out to use Excel very well on a, maybe a two or three times uh, a time uh, uh, training. And uh, like I said, that we use pre-assessment and post-assessment. So, so from the post-assessment, because we wanted to check whether what we did, do we have, is there a success record? And we're able to see that before the training, most people that said they are beginners, that they, they, they have never used Excel before, have, we have about maybe 43% in the interview. They, those that have seen it before, but they don't know, they, don't, they are not really expert. But after the experiment, the, um, the um, percentage increased. So the project line was eight weeks, like I said, because we have a time frame. So the strength and weakness of the experiment, like I said, that UI Lisa is, is, is becoming a household name in the university community and environs now. The experiment was floated on this, which made the experiment a success. And a kind of limitation that I can said was also funded because most interns were not, we, we, we didn't give them anything, just do it a kind of a, a volunteer. Uh, so we didn't remunerate them for the exercise. So that is the uh, limitation that I can say that we have from the, from the experiment. But this real success, most of these business owners, they now want to, they said they are ready to come to UI Lisa to bring their, uh, to bring their problem, to help them increase their level and some other things. So it's a kind of, that can actually add to our, our income generating uh, income generation. Okay, like I said that, okay, normally we, our this has been within the academia. We've been adding students, researchers from various institutions and stuff like that. But now we are now trying to go and bridge the gap between the town and camp because, you know, if your activities is only mainly for academia, it is still the same thing. We are still doing the same thing. But now when you can actually bring those that are not in the academics, let them know what this lab is doing. So it tends to even, there are some of, some of those people now, they want their students or their boss to come and do things at UI Lisa. So that has been part of uh, what we, we, we recorded from the, from the experiment and we still seek uh, grants to sustain its personal capacity because many labs want to come to UI Lisa for, for collaboration. But if you want to come to UI Lisa, there is, we don't have accommodation to provide. We don't, we don't have the money to feed you. We don't have, but if there is grant for such, we can actually do exchange uh, programs. The only collaboration that we can do for any staff lab for now, it could be, it's just a virtual uh, collaboration. But for in-person collaboration or training or stuff, we need grants and funding for that. So the credits, like I said, I have so many, uh, so many uh, Lisa team, but these are the interns that were used for this uh, training. So I have to acknowledge them, the credit goes to them because they really did a very wonderful job. And these are their names, they are the 2021 and 2022 interns. So most, most, though most of them have finished their internship, I still have maybe two or three that are still in the, in the lab. So the credit actually goes to them. So thank you. What's of our pictures at UI Lisa? This is one of 
the visit from uh, Dr. Obidi from Unilag. She also came to Lisa to for maybe for training. These are most of my team. This is Dr. Adipo, she's supposed to be here, but she's not. And the interns, this is uh, Professor Atikinika Adivanji, where she came January, she was also with us. I should have, oh, I don't have Dr. Anda. Oh, sorry, I missed that. So he also came January. So thank you for listening. Great question. Um, thank you for that wonderful presentation. I want to ask, but I expect you to uh, tell me what are the major setback or limitation of that project. Now, because I did a particular project similar in that area by GIZ. Now, I want to ask you. I'm selling fabric at Agbo, convince me why do I need statistics? Because that is the, uh, convince me, I, I can relate with uh, school owners, writers, but the, fab, uh, the fabric sellers, how do you convince them that they need statistics? But I like that question. You see, you know, in this uh, experiment, there is a particular outlet that called Ankara Zone. And this outlet, the woman said Ankara, different uh, Ankara that you can think of. So when we, when we listed her, I don't even expect that she will, she will consent to the, to, the, to the experiment. But it was, I was really amazed when she said she has, she said she has intent. She has students that come for IT in her shop. I was like, wow, well, you have IT? She said she has, uh, um, what do they call it? this apprentice. She has apprentice. So she could, she could, she, could, she generates, she generates the uh, data. She could get the, what the question that we, we, we asked her in the Google form was, okay, like, okay, you are, you are selling, you are just selling. What, what actually do you need? What, what do you need? What do you need from us? She said she wants to know how many, how many, how many, uh, during, you know, selling of clothes is seasonal. There are some people that doesn't buy throughout the year. It's only maybe during the Christmas, the Eid, the, that the, so she wanted to know how much she sell during the, some particular seasons. She wants to know how many uh, meals that come to her shop. She wants to know how many uh, trainees that she has been having over the years. She wanted to know so many things that, you know, we generated data unconsciously. So those are the things that, in fact, when we asked her, that do you have, have she said she has, but she has not been using it. She doesn't know what to use it for. And we said, have you heard ex about Excel before? She said she used her laptop to watch people only. Okay, no, we can, we, you can make use of your, your laptop to do this, to do this. She was really amazing. In fact, she was one of the best um, uh, best, um, uh, uh, specimen, thank you. <laughs> so, is she, she, we, she, uh, that was how we convinced her. Thank you. Because we train interns, one of the challenges we have is the fact that we are constrained by space. As she said, we have three streams of uh, interns, but we have just one room where we operate for those who have visited us. So the real concern as part of the effort to find solution to our problem is to interact with these small scale business owners so that these interns, rather than even remaining in the same academic environment. They can be received by these job owners and they can now be exposed to real practical statistical uh, uh, engagement. So they can now be useful to these small state businesses by helping them to compile their data, helping them to monitor their daily uh, 
sales, transactions, and generating either weekly report about the business activities. If it's schools, they can take monitor attendance, pupils attendance, and looking at teachers attendance and absent, present, and things like that. So now we can post interns to those businesses rather than keeping them in our very limited uh, space. So it's a mutual benefit. We are benefiting. Hopefully with time, we expect them to appreciate the, the importance of statistics. Thereby, they will be willing to pay for services. Because if their business grow, then we can put it to them to also say, we need help. Can you pay a token for the little service we want to render to you? <clears throat> Uh, thank, thank you, you. my sister. I, I like the way you were able to convince us about how you managed to uh, invite uh, the fashioners and the trade women and other things to your, 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 your start lab. Uh, the question that I want to ask, and the only thing that I'm not clear about is, you have concentrated on a, a one direction where the person is literate she can read and write, or he can read and write. Let's look at the other side, where the person cannot read and write, a trade man, a trade woman who cannot read and write. How will you use your start lab to help that person? Thank you. You know, you know the first time I said we started with, the first stage was listening. We listed some businesses, about 52 of them. So it was during the consent letter that we sent that those that are willing, because it's possible that the woman that is selling a camo, for instance, it, it might think she doesn't need statistics. What business am I doing? What am I, what am I, which uh, profit am I uh, making? So that means what the, but maybe I should add that to the limitation that it has to be those that were literate because we actually sent a letter and it is those that are ready, that knows the, uh, the beauty of what we wanted to do, that consent to it. Because there, is, there, was, a particular, there was a particular business, a particular business owner. She's a, you know, there is different between somebody that is selling fashion fibers and a fashion designer. So there is a particular fashion designer that was not even included. We didn't even list her because when, when, they were, when we wanted to start the, uh, the second stage that we went for familiarization, so she saw us, she was like, maybe she thought we were trying to distribute something. So she was the one that even said, please, so I want to be back part of the survey. So we explained what we wanted to do and she said, oh, She's interested. She's a fashion house that sold clothes for people. And she said she's interested and we included her. So I think maybe that can be part of the literature, but we've already sent a consent for those that are willing. We are not forcing anybody. So the next group that have not consented, I think that will be those ones that we have be focusing in the future uh, experiments. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. Thank you. I think I think I might it's okay if we I want to get to our dinner in time. So we're gonna end this question session and then we can do more questions. We're gonna have more time for discussion tomorrow and the next day. So we'll continue discussing those experiments as we go. So let's thank thank you. Thank you for our speaker. So our final speaker of the day is Dr. Asifa Kamal from Laha University or College for Women University in Pakistan. Please welcome our speaker. Hello, good afternoon, everyone. Thank you, Ilana. And first of all, I would like to thank Professor Dr. Eric Vance for giving me an opportunity 
to present my work here and also uh, supporting me for the visit to Ghana along with my colleague. I am also highly indebted to Professor Atenoki Adibanji, uh, who continuously uh, facilitated us for in the uh, visa getting process. Thank you so much. So I think uh, all of you must be tired like me. <laughs> and there are 34 slides, but I will try to do it fast. So uh, the title of uh, experiment is, uh, we have given to the experiment is that can four wheels web page office collaborators at LOI. LOI is something like similar to MOU. drive with the LCW on sustainable track. So the strategy we opted is, is like a mixed pack. We have applied several strategy, strategies and decided time to time. Uh, if one failed, then we opted another one. Uh, along with me, uh, in, in this whole experiment, uh, has uh, Ms. Asma, uh, Dr. Naila Amjad and Ms. Abira Shakti. Uh, we know that statistics is a collaborative science. According to Korn field, it is the best fellow of the sciences. And uh, there is alarming situation in statistical data analysis. I have gone to an article by Watt. Watt 2018 found 1100 instances in which analytic error may have occurred. And in 616 instances, these errors were likely present. And he is the uh, reviewer of uh, renowned impact factor journal. Uh, of the articles reviewed, 28% did not mention weighting data, 40% did not mention accounting for complex sampling design to properly estimate variance. 59% used improper language when discussing results in the text. Uh, for example, estimates and lies to the sample as opposed to the population. And 79% did not use proper significance testing. Nostrum 2015 also observed poor quality of statistical analysis in high impact factor journals. So here the role of stats lab starts and its sustainability matters. Uh, the name of our lab is Lisa LCWU. It is located in, uh, in the Department of Statistics, Lahore College for Women University, Lahore, Pakistan. And uh, we got the uh, transitional membership in uh, February 2020, uh, and in May 2020, we, we got the full membership. And it is the 15th lab that got full membership uh, in the uh, series of getting uh, membership. So here are the, some pictures of events we have conducted. Uh, before sustainability experiment, we have conducted uh, these activities, including collaboration, collaborations, four joint projects with Lisa Labs, uh, with uh, KU Lisa, and with uh, 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 Professor Richa in India, and also with Dr. Amin, who, is, uh, uh, who, who was also the uh, Lisa member. And we have also conducted 14 workshops and trained 662 uh, participants. We have got two uh, grants from ISI and World Bank, and we have uh, conducted two seminars and one webinar, uh, and there are two KVUs for that webinar, and it is available uh, on the YouTube. Uh, we have also organized the poster competition, and 53 uh, students from other disciplines and from the Swiss statistics departments participated in that poster competition. Uh, the feedback is quite encouraging. Uh, we have uh, compiled the feedback from the eight uh, workshops uh, Lisa LCW organized. And this is the feedback of the participants uh, on the basis of certain questions. All uh, um, part the bar shows satisfied or either very well satisfied. Only 
except this one, it shows that we are unsatisfied with the time for the practice. So the big question is, was Lisa LCW on sustainable path? Uh, I, we observed that there are two challenges we can face in the future and currently we are also facing that number one is the gap between domain experts and collaborators. And challenge two is the demotivation of collaborators. And it is uh, because of that reason that workload is not counted. And second one is the there, there is not any monetary benefits associated with LISA collaborators and trainers. The strength of LISA LCWU before sustainability experiment is the faculty of statistics departments. We have 17 faculty members, including five PhDs, students of BS and MS statistics, computer lab of statistics department, and coordinator, me, my, uh, Lisa LCW, who is now also the chairperson of statistics department. The, the weaknesses are not any permanent position of Lisa LCW co coordinator, and there is not any financial support from the university, and Lisa LCW had not any separate office. How do we get the idea uh, for the sustainability experiment? Lisa 2020 network from Lisa 2020 network sustainability assessment document. We got two ideas, and also from the Professor Vance's uh, article and Professor Vance and Tonya's article on statistics and data science collaboration laboratories engine for de uh, development helped us uh, to devise the strategies. So first one strategy that was opted uh, is extensive publicity to attract more collaborators and domain experts in this context we generated a web page uh, on the uh, website of LCWU, Statistics Department LCWU, here is the web link. It includes four tabs showing different activities of LISA LCWU, also showing the mission and vision of LISA LCWU. Next one is extensive use of WhatsApp groups, not only of the university, but outside the university, like Islamic Society of Statistical Sciences, and also the alumni uh, WhatsApp group. And we have also got the permission for e-newsletter. Uh, it would be a, a biannual, and hopefully we will uh, launch it in, in at the end of uh, June. And it will include all the activities of Visa. LCWU and we, we will share on different forums as well as on the website. The next one is the allocation of necessary infrastructure and we got it. This is the, uh, this is the picture of our office with the LCWU in the premises of university. And so it, uh, it, uh, people uh, recognize that authorities allow us to give us the space and so uh, our activities are a little bit uh, become, uh, you can say that uh, become a leak, <laughs> yeah, acknowledge. <laughs> uh, third one, uh, the third one is to reduce the work burden by sharing workload and uh, the, uh, they, uh, we have extended our team of uh, collaborators and this is the list of that thing. Now it is, I think I, we have uh, 18 collaborators working with us and they are also helping, not only collaborating, but they are also helping in uh, organizing the events. Uh, the fourth one is point generation for self-reliance. Uh, we have applied university authorities uh, uh, to charge a token fee for workshop. Uh, the second one option was to apply for grants and third one is nominal fee from domain experts for collaboration on projects. But in this uh, course of time, uh, we have observed that we have uh, done many training successfully, but 
there was no collaborative uh, domain expert who contacted us for data analysis purpose. Then we decided to, uh, uh, to organize a consultancy desk in the department and uh, invite different department uh, students and researchers from other departments to bring their data and we will provide them consultancy. And last one is the letter of intent with uh, University of Colorado Boulder and LCWU. The parameters to quantify success of sustainability experiments are number of future collaborators trained, number of trainings organized, number of participants of free workshops, number of participants in paid workshops, grants received, number of collaboration with other departments, to organize activities, statistical data analysis, consultancy projects, data and funded research projects. Uh, how we have adopted, adapted the, the, these all experiments for this LCWU allocation of office space and generation of web page has supported extensive publicity campaign and build image and trust that it is office approved by university authority. LCW is women university and in our local culture, working women have to look after family, generally joint family system, along with jobs. So it is observed that only for city kids, no one is agreed to take a workload of these LCW activities. Token money from collaboration can be shared with the collaborators to incentive wise and to bear office expenses as being developing countries, salaries of teaching faculty are not lucrative. So these are the results. Uh, we have trained 18 collaborators, number and uh, number of trainings, workshops, seminars conducted are four. 128 participants uh, got training in these three workshops. 46 participants uh, attended paid workshops. And uh, we have applied for IS, uh, we have applied to ISLP for grant, but it is uh, not yet approved. Uh, we have entertained 38 uh, data consultancy projects, and uh, we have uh, got, uh, we have not uh, uh, won that one project, but being a, a statistician, we will uh, we will do the data analysis of the National Institute of Health project. And uh, uh, we have been also offered to become a member of institutional review board of one of the big medical college. To give suggestions on data and uh, uh, statistic, uh, designing of uh, study and in the statistical data analysis. So how ex these uh, all experiments address the challenge of sustainability of these LCWs? So we will start from the first one challenge. That is, uh, we have addressed it through the extensive publicity strategy that has been establishing repute of these LCWs, uh, web page and office allocation, authenticated that these LCWs is part of the university and help to build trust between collaborators and domain experts. Uh, as far as challenge two was concerned, that is uh, that was related to the workload. So, workload of managing LISA LCW has been distributed by engaging with the inclusion of more members, which resulted in success that is increased in quarterly activities of LISA LCW, offering of monetary incentives to attract collaborators and source persons is not done due to non-approval from the university authorities. Uh, one proposal has been submitted to ISP, but still not received any grant. Evaluation of success of the experiment on the basis of quarter, uh, quarterly data. So here we can observe that it is the first quarter of 2022 and we have 31 trained, 31 collaborators or trainers, uh, 174 uh, students or faculty members were trained and number of workshops, four uh, workshops or seminars have been organized and we have provided a, a consultancy on the 39 projects. Previously, we have only seven. It means it is 
scriptures. Good. So uh, the expected outcomes of experiments are increased in activities, collaborators trained, participants of workshops, recognition of Lisa CW outside the university, what is unexpected, unapproval of fee charging. Uh, I was expecting that university will approve it, but suddenly other departments um, discouraged vice chancellor <laughs> and uh, they, uh, they are keeping our uh, application file. Still, they have not returned us. So, so lessons learned from sustainability experiment is that continuous emphasize on publicity. The, that is uh, by improvement in the content of web page and its regular upgradation and also extensive sharing of e-newsletter. E Assign duties to members of LISA LCW to sit in the office to attend domain experts. It is necessary that uh, there must be a timetable uh, outside the door and uh, collaborators sit uh, uh, in the office regularly so that uh, if some domain expert visit and talk open. Regular recruitment of capable students from BS and MS statistics to assist in conducting lab activities. Uh, after uh, conducting the experiments, two of the weaknesses have converted into the simpler, and that is the allocation of furnished office with nameplate of Lisa LCWU outside the door and engagement of more students for BS and MS statistics for assistant as volunteer. And workload of LISA LCW coordinator, Dr. Ashwa Kamali shared substantially due to the involvement of Ms. Asma Zay. And the weakness is not, uh, not biggest third is only lack of funds. So uh, the limitation of experiment is timeline. So uh, only three months, uh, it is very difficult to conclude and get some uh, substantial outcome of the experiment. The time is quite limited. So conclusion is web page, proper office, increased number of collaborators and LOI with your know, University of Colorado Boulder, USA and LCW has placed with the LCW on sustainable path. But it needs fuel in the form of funds generation and we want to get the self-reliant. We have, uh, in the application, I have uh, mentioned the fee, just the three or four dollars. So I think it, it should be, uh, fee should be charged so that it makes the uh, uh, participants of workshop serious. Otherwise uh, they take it freely and sometimes they got registered and do not attend. So uh, it is necessary. Uh, the advice to other stats lab is uh, engage more collaborators from statistics department of the university allocation of separate office and uh, launching of website page. Uh, for, in, for future, uh, uh, we have planned certain more strategies to cope with the uh, situation of not uh, uh, non-approval of our application. And uh, the idea we have got from the VN of uh, Lisa 2020, that is action on the basis of evidence. So we're now starting to collect the evidence that it is very essential. In this context, we have designed a questionnaire that is uh, the, uh, need, uh, to assess the need of statistical data analysis. And uh, uh, during the, uh, in the help, uh, when we have uh, organized activity of data consultancy help desk, who uh, contacted us, we asked them to fill that survey and we will take them as the cases and for, for the controls, we have contacted different departments and got the, that uh, survey form filled. We will analyze it and provide evidence to vice chancellor that what faculty needs. And second one is the evidence I have got from the our Higher Education Commission curriculum and the uh, Higher Education Commission uh, last one uh, booklet, I have found that there was the recommendation that every uh, staff department of every university should have a consultancy, data analysis consultancy center. So I will show her so that to convince her. And uh, then we will work on the internship at LISA LCWU. 
and uh, next is the approval of course on collaboration in the bs curriculum of statistics it is in fact very helpful if we include make it as a part of our bs curriculum and then everything will be smooth because we can get an evidence that it is a part of our curriculum and next one is inclusion of collaboration course as part of hec higher education commission curriculum as well because i am a member of that committee so uh, i hope that in next uh, meeting uh, we will try to get course outline from professor van which is got at the university of colorado boulder and uh, convince them to include that course in the higher education commission curriculum as well these are the references and these are the list of authors thank you so much Is this still not working? Oh, no, it's working. Okay. Uh, uh, questions or comments from the audience? I just wanted to say, when I saw your metrics come in this quarter, and I saw that you went from zero, zero, seven, zero, zero collaborations to 39, that blew my mind. That was amazing. I just want, can we, can we just clap for them one more time? Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you so much. Any other questions? Great presentation, Asifa. Thank you. Uh, I noticed in one of your slides, you you put you use WhatsApp groups, but you said extensively use WhatsApp WhatsApp groups. So I I have questions about how do you use those WhatsApp groups uh, in particular. Who manages these groups? Who is participating of these groups? And who is allowed to send messages in these groups? Uh, first one, I have, uh, for example, if we have, uh, uh, we are going to organize a workshop, we have made a fly. So I shared the fly on the, those work, uh, WhatsApp groups. And the WhatsApp group includes our university WhatsApp group, which is sent to the admin and they share with other members. And for similar is the case with Islamic Society of Statistical uh, Sciences, we share with the admin and they put it on their WhatsApp group. Uh, as far as alumni is concerned, I am the member of uh, alumni of Comet uh, College University, so I can, can share directly. Yeah. Okay, okay, thank you. Uh, two things. One, I noticed you are not happy because the vice chancellor didn't approve. <laughs> no, yeah. my vice chancellor is quite supportive, and uh, she has mentioned Lisa LCW in our, our in our convocation. But in his con uh, in her convocation, she didn't address. approve. She didn't but approve your members, request to charge fee. But other members who are involved in this process, <laughs> other departments who are uh, who get afraid that someone is getting highlighted <laughs> yeah so i mean you can you can let them you can put two options before them one option is for the university to fund your training activities mm -hmm. so that you offer this training to the student free and staff free but let the university bear the costs uh, we right. have done free many workshops we have conducted free yeah so, but, but is the university giving you funding no so that's the point can you put before the university that you are willing to train this number every year or run this number of courses every year but you need funding so if they want you to run those courses free of charge then they should fund the, uh, uh, the organizers. That's one option. If they are not willing, then they should allow you to charge moderate fee. Don't say big fee, moderate economy fee, affordable I, fee. I have really $3 for okay. this thing of even a five days workshop. Okay. But <laughs> my my question uh, is the second part is yeah. uh, what's your reward from collaboration? What has been your reward 
reward? Uh, what I has been your reward from collaboration? That is another challenge uh, we are facing because some uh, are willing to give the co-authorship, so that is the reward, but there are many uh, who do not want to do that. And they are not also ready to pay for, yeah. they are not also ready to pay. Uh, actually, if the university allows, they will pay. That is why we have, in the need assessment, we have included question, are you willing to uh, pay or are you willing to give the authorship? And also. So my advice to, institutions having this challenge is you might need to go outside your university to seek for collaboration. If there is restriction, if, if you are restricted from earning uh, income from internal collaboration, then step out, get out of your restriction environment, uh, restricted area. Mm -hmm. and then uh, seek collaboration with uh, non-governmental, governmental, and so on, right? Okay. Well, let's give our speaker and our speakers a big round of applause.